All right, so this is going to be part one to what if Deku was a siren. So with that being said, let's just roll the intro. All right, so before we actually get started, uh, I did take a break. If, obviously, if you were keeping up with my community tab, but there's a few things I'd like to ask you. So, um, you know, what do you think about my new profile picture? I'll show it on screen right here. Uh, I really like it, in my opinion. I took some time making it. I combined the elements of two characters I really love. That being Josuke from Part 4 of JoJo, as well as Bon. So I hope you guys like it. Tell me what you think about it. Also, tell me what you guys did for Christmas, because I want to know you guys... Um, you know, I really appreciate you guys supporting me and I want to know what you guys, you know, were doing just as a general kind of thing. Also, I want to test out a new kind of idea I had. So when you guys comment uh, on my videos or any other what if videos, I want to do like a little test. So if you guys are my fans and you want to kind of participate in this kind of um, experiment, I guess. So what it's going to be is that you guys comment, just do your normal comment that you would normally do on videos, so like on what if videos and things like that. But at the end of your comments, just put CS for Comic Sans. So I want to see how many people we actually get to um, actually do, um, actually does this, right? So with that being said, let's actually get into the what if. So uh, let's go and start off what a siren is. So when we're talking about sirens, we're talking about the Borderlands universe. So what is a siren? A siren is someone who is born or is given massive amounts of psychic powers. And there's only supposed to be six in the universe. So before I get any further, this is going to go over some spoilers for Borderlands 3. So if you haven't played the game, uh, I would suggest playing it. It's really fun. I really like it. Uh, or you can watch a, you know, a let's play of it on YouTube or something like that. So if you haven't played the game uh, and you don't want to get spoiled, don't watch the rest of this. Or I'll put a skip to kind of skip over the explanation and you can go and watch the rest of the video. So um, a siren, like I said, is someone who's imbued with a lot of psychic power and typically born with it. But they don't have to be born with it. They could get it later on through the siren who has the power dying. So there's supposed to be six sirens and each six have a unique power. And I'll name off the ones that we know currently. So we don't know all of them. We only know uh, five out of the six. So we have phase walk, which lets the person being able um, to teleport as well as create explosions. So the way it works is that the person goes into it bridges dimensions together and they become invisible. And they're able to teleport people as well as others. And this is the power of Lilith um, from the first game as well as the other three entries or four entries i guess if you're counting the pre-sequel so typically it's fire the element is fire but it doesn't have to be so yeah next we have phase lock and that is the power of maya which basically she creates this kind of bubble and this bubble is able to um lift things capture things it's like the force kind of or telekinesis just with a little bubble right and when troy used it he was actually able to uh, transfer power to bandits which made them imbued which basically gave them a power up um get, uh, gave them the the power to um teleport as teleport short distances as well as shoot uh energy as well as have enhanced strength and durability so yeah next we have phase trance and this is the power of a Mar amari no, Amara from Borderlands 3. So this is the Vault Hunter you actually get to play in, play as in, in Borderlands 3. So her power is a little bit different. Phase Trance has three parts to it since there's three different action skills connected to it. But they all have to do with the kind of the same idea of astral projection. So we'll go over each of them. We're not going to go over the kind of um, augmentations that each action skill has. Because we'll just go over that later in a different video. So with phase uh with phase trance there's three different parts to it there's phase slam which basically she jumps into the air and basically slams down with all six of her astral production like arms and it does like 
it does corrosive damage for its tree so but you could change it so then we have phase grasp which basically summons a hand and grabs an enemy and holds them in place which lets them be you know it makes them become vulnerable so then we have phase cast which basically what it does is that it shoots out an astral projection of amara and it does damage from anything that gets in its path next uh the next power that isn't connected to amara is actually the power of both the calypso twins both tyrene and uh troy and that is going to be phase leech this isn't the official name there isn't an official there isn't a an, an official name for this skill uh so yeah it basically lets the user absorb the power of any living creature to the point that they become just dust right so think about like um i guess like alex mercer how he consumes people it's kind of like that but like he just absorbs them it's kind of weird uh with this power they're able to absorb uh creatures that are way stronger than them like the vault creatures as well as take the powers of other sirens and this is the main way that troy's actually kept alive um using this power so that's the basic abilities there's also a six siren um so you guys can tell me I'll, I'll have the fans actually create the power for the six siren so yeah plus in the in borderlands 3 there is rumored to be a seventh siren so in total that would make uh eight sirens because of troy because troy shares the power of tyrene uh, so that would make eight sirens in total if the seventh one is true. So with that being said, uh, the way that a male is actually become actually can become a siren is very unique because Troy, to our knowledge, is the only exception to the rule because most of the time it's women. So um, the way that a male can become a siren is that they need to be conjoined twins. This is the only way that we found out. There is another possibility, and I'll go over that. Um, so basically, Troy was a conjoined twin with Tyrene, which basically means they were connected um, through his arm, right? Where his right arm should be, that's where they were connected and eventually cut off, which that's why he has a prosthetic arm. So there's another way uh, that a person can get powers is that through um, when the siren dies, they can actually choose who to give it to. And if not, that power will randomly go to someone in the universe. Typically, I believe it has to be a newborn if it's not chosen uh, directly. So a male could be given the powers if the siren were to um, pass down the powers to them, I guess. Uh, maybe. But in this case, we're going to have a kind of conjoined twin case. So in this one, Deku is actually going to have a twin. And um, her name, I believe I wrote it down. It's uh, Satoko. Which basically means fire, or one of one of the names in Japanese that means fire. So yeah, so in this one, we're gonna give Deku actually a uh, phase leech, and give her his sister um, phase walk. So yeah, I know that it is weird. I know that technically he should have the same power as her if they're conjoined twins, but I'm gonna make it so because I want to make it where Deku becomes kind of overpowered in this and actually does kind of unlock all the powers maybe maybe not uh, so yeah like i said before um tr i'll have you guys basically comment down uh the six power and what you think or should be just have like something phase and then something um you know just name it like phase and then something else so yeah phase of ph so with that being said, let's actually get into the what if. I know this was a long exp uh, explanation, but I'll make this video longer for because of that. So Deku is actually not born a single or a only child. Is actually he's actually born um, a conjoined twin with his sister Sat um, Satoko. And when they're born, they actually have some strange tattoos. Uh, Deku has his red tattoo going up his left arm all the way to his neck, while his sister has something similar but it is blue so they don't really know what this is they can only assume that it's, that it's their quirk so they go with that eventually at a certain point they're forced to basically take them apart and in this process deku actually loses his right arm which is then replaced with a prosthetic one 
since my hero is slightly ahead in terms of technology we could say it's more uh more advanced so nothing like it wouldn't be like troy's since troy's like kind of uh i would guess kind of made it a junk i would say but it's kind of different so it's more uh, i guess more realistic in terms of arm shape and length so yeah so deku he learns he's a pretty weak child when he's born weak as in like immune system and generally weak as in he is kind of sickly in a way so he actually has to leech off his sister for most of his life uh or most of his early uh, childhood because of it but he always wishes to become a hero and sato uh satoko um doesn't really he she actually supports him and wants him to train so they actually do because Satoko is able to give him as much power as he needs, this gives him a lot of um, chances to actually train um, with her and actually develop her power, develop his powers as well hers pow her powers. Because if you don't know, Troy was never really able to train his powers because of the limits they would have, and Tyreen not really giving him that chance because he's really dependent on her. Um, as like a quick nickname or um, when I say Sato, I also mean Sato Ko, so his sister. Um, which I'll, 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 um, I believe there's a student in class 1A that is called Sato. So I'll, I'll distinguish the two when that comes up. So Sato actually gets Deku to train and when they actually go into kindergarten, Deku is kind of picked on but is protected by his sister um sato right because of her power being able to uh teleport as well as create small explosions so bakugo kind of takes a liking to her because they both have something in common which is explosions but she doesn't really like him because how she how he basically bullies daku which she is very protective of because of how close they are so, because of this, Bakugo actually does let up on bullying Deku a bit, but is still kind of uh, resentful towards him because of this. But Deku does train his quirk a bit more and actually learns that he actually is able to siphon energy from other living things, not just, uh, you know, Sato. So, he actually does this. So, he basically absorbs the life energy of plants around him as well well i guess mostly plants since he doesn't want to kill anything very large at least at this point so he starts absorbing their kind of power and is actually able to kind of live off this kind of power not just rely on um sato so because of how long he's been absorbing sato's power um by the time he's in middle school, he's actually able to use her power to a lesser extent. So at this point, Sato is very strong and actually is able to use her power very effectively. While Deku can use a, a version of her power, but not to the same extent. So less explosions and less distance, right? So because of this, um, Deku is actually seen... Uh, he is kind of respected in a way because of the two powers he has. And yeah. So as we go into this story, um, I'm going to give him more and more powers. And you guys can tell me what uh, skills that you should uh, that I should add into his kind of skill tree, I guess. Because we're going to have that balance between in-game mechanics as well as lore. Because in lore, there isn't any cooldowns with abilities. It's mostly stamina, right? So, but there are like some skills on the skill tree that would help in this kind of scenario. So you guys can tell me down below which ones. So, uh, we would get to the day that um, the teachers actually passing out the papers to see what the kids want to do with their lives after middle school. And this is where he announces that three students are actually going to UA. That being uh, Bakugo, Deku, and uh, Sato. So because of this, uh, Bakugo isn't too angry at Deku actually doing this at this point there he isn't really angry they're not really rivals but they're not really friends either they're just acquaintances because of how Bakugo kind of likes his sister a bit 
because of how much they have in common, but uh, she doesn't really like him. So, um, he doesn't really talk to them for, because of this. So, nothing really comes up about him announcing this. But they do compliment Sato and Bakugo about, uh, you know, trying to get into UA. But they don't really talk about Deku too much because he is seen as the weaker of the three. So, they don't really talk too much about him. So, um, let's say that's, I guess because they can't really use their powers in public, they would still have to walk home. And this is where uh, the sludge villain would actually attack. And because of this, this is where Sato would be able to go into phase walk and basically get out of the situation. While Deku wouldn't really be able to and be kind of stuck. But because he's actually having contact with a living creature, um, this is where he starts siphoning the energy from the slime, the sludge villain, and this is where uh, Sato would actually come out of the phase walk and actually does a, an explosion with the combined kind of powers. This would actually uh, knock out the villain because of how weak he would be, as well as um, Sato basically doing the final blow this is when all might would actually come and this is where he would bottle him up and take the villain so this is where he would see both deku and um sato and he would basically say oh did you guys you know take down this villain they would say yes and he could tell like oh are you guys twins because he could see that both of them have tattoos as well as having similar faces because they are twins right and they would say yes. And he would ask what kind of quirk they have. And I would say that both of them would have the same kind of quirk name as their power in the Borderlands. Which would be Phase Leech and Phase Walk. So he'd be, you know, kind of, you know, he'd be uh, really interested in them. And he'd say, oh, you guys have really bright futures. And this is where he would walk away. But because of Deku, he doesn't have the most confidence in this one. He's still similar to how he is in canon. Because of how his quirk is perceived as well as being reliant on others so he would still attach himself to all might and his sister would notice this and be like you know what what is that what is that idiot doing right because he just got attached to all might so all might would have to go and go on top of the building and basically um be on top or uh, he would have to land on the building and this is where he would reveal his secret. And as this is going down, um, this is where Sato actually does a. Uh, he she actually activates a telepath, with, uh, which is a power I didn't explain, but it, it seems that all sirens have uh, telepathy, just how you see in every kind of Borderlands. So she would use her telepathy to basically talk to Deku, like, you know, what what did you do? Why did you hang on to all my but he's not really, you know, listening. And this is where he talks to All Might and tells him, you know, even with this power, even relying on others, do you think I could become a hero? And actually, All Might doesn't say, I don't think All Might would say yes in this scenario. I think he would say like, um, he would be like, uh, young man, it's okay to rely on others on sometimes, but you can't do it all the time and your power you're very weak at this point, and I don't know if that'll ever change. If you really are someone who relies on others to this extent to even live, then it might not be the right profession for you. I think you'd be better as a cop. Um, and this is where All Might would actually power down, and this is where uh, Deku would actually see him, and this is where All Might would basically explain how it happened. And after that explanation was done, this is where Deku would actually leave. And as he goes down, this is where they hear the explosions. And this is where Bakugo is actually trapped within the slime villain. Actually, I keep saying actually. So he would actually... This is where he would be trapped. And this is where uh, Deku would actually see it. By the time he actually gets there, this is where... Um, Sato would actually catch up with him and being like, you know, that was a stupid idea. Why'd you hang on to All Might? 
what do you think you're trying to like do? And this is where that could be like, that's not important right now. Someone's in trouble. And I think I'm the one who caused it. He would see Bakugo in the, in the midst of the kind of sludge villain as well as the kind of the hero's not doing anything. And he's very confused at this point of why no one's doing anything. So because of this, this is where uh, Deku actually runs into the midst of the fight and throws his backpack as normal towards the sludge villain. And this is where he basically starts leeching off of the sludge villain even more. And, you know, the sludge villain's like, you know, kid, what are you doing? And this is where he becomes weaker and weaker to the point where he actually turns into dust. So Deku actually kills him. But um, since it was a case of saving another person's life and this person, the vil it was a villain that was, I would, let's just say he was a murderer. So Deku would be able to kind of justify this in his mind, I guess, as well as in the law, since he was protecting another person. So eventually, this is where All Might would come people at first would be scared of this you know of this kid who just turned this villain to dust right and deku his tattoos would be glowing at this point because of how much energy he took from a person because he's never taken something as much as a person especially someone with such a powerful quirk so um in this one i'm not gonna say that he's able to take quirks you guys can disagree with me in the comments below, but I don't think it would work that way since Siren powers are technically not a quirk in this universe or in this kind of um, what if, I guess, unless you want it to be. So, yeah. So, All Might would come through and basically explain the situation, saying that we should praise this kid for saving someone's life instead of just, you know, being scared of him. You know, this man still risked his life. And that's what he would call him. He would call him a man. So that people would have more support around them. And then this is where Sato would come in. And basically say like. You know, that was pretty risky. I don't think you should have done that. But, you know, it all worked out in the end. So, I guess you should be proud about that. And she would notice that his tattoos were glowing. And he'd be like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel great. I don't feel like I... I'm as weak as I used to be, or as sick as I used to be. I actually feel uh, fantastic. So Deku, um, at this point, he wouldn't need to rely on uh, Sato at this point. Just how uh, Troy wouldn't have to rely on his sister later on in the game. I won't spoil it, but yeah. So um, after this, they would be walking home, and this is where. Uh, All Might would actually come come out of the kind of, uh, I guess, alleyway. And this is where he would surprise them saying, I am here. And then turning into his small might form. And because of this, I don't think he'd be worried about Sato revealing the secrets since um, she sees he would see that she was heroic with taking out the sludge villain from earlier, as well as her being um, Deku's brother. Or not brother, sister. So, yeah. So, he would explain the power and he would ask him if he would want to be the successor to One for All. And Deku would obviously agree because in this timeline, uh, Deku would still be... Um, he, he would still be a fan of All Might. Uh, just how he was in canon because of how weak he was even with a quirk at the beginning. So he would agree, and this is where um, he would actually use. Uh, he would actually get one for all, uh, or he would. This is the point where he would start his training to get one for all. So he would do that. Um, he would go to the beach and basically clean up the trash, as well as um, his sister being there as well to kind of help him train, train up his body so that he can actually uh, use one for all so uh it's weird because he does have a robotic arm uh at this point a little bit like more it's more advanced than it was when he was a kid since their technology has advanced since that as well as um it's kind of weird how one for all would work would one for all actually transfer to his robotic arm i'm not really too sure about that since it isn't his flesh and blood but you guys can tell me down below what you guys think so after such a long time of basically building up his muscles by the end of it 
Oh, and his like siren powers. By the end of it, he'd be able to basically uh, get one for all. So, in this one, we can say that, um, I guess. So the way that uh, Deku gets the other siren powers is that because one for all basically takes the um, the powers of each user beforehand. You know how it, like each user basically adds their power to the quirk. Let's say that this actually combines with his siren powers and lets the user of phase leech use the powers of other phase leech users. So let's say that a phase leech user took the powers of um let's just say phase lock for now so if in the past a phase leech user took phase lock from another siren then deck would start slowly being able to use that power so that's how i'm going to justify him being able to use uh the other siren powers so yeah so we would get to the day and where they would actually go to um, basically to the uh, entry exams, right? So Deku would do normal on his kind of written part, and I think Sato would do a little bit better since she would be more focused on study than, well, training because she already has really good control over Quirk. So this is where they would actually go to the practical exam, and Deku and Sato would be talking about how, you know, they're excited for this, or they're kind of, or Deku's kind of nervous, and Sato's kind of trying to trying to kind of cheer him up and this is where Ida would actually tell him to you know be quiet since you know it's gonna disturb other people that are trying to get in so they would agree with him since they don't really want to argue and as they're kind of talking this is where they would miss the kind of goal from um from president mike and they would have to rush in so deku doesn't really meet uraraka at this point because he wouldn't trip uh, because of he's a little bit more confident but he is still nervous and he has his sister to kind of pick him or grab him before he trips so as this the as president mike says go this is where um this is when sato actually teleports both her and deku to the kind of center so that they could actually go and get to the robots faster so after that deku would start running and actually kind of destroying a few robots using um basically his weaker version of phase walk going invisible um teleporting next to him and doing some explosions and yeah so he will do this for a couple seconds getting a couple points here and there but it is uh kind of draining on him since he doesn't really fully master phase walk at this point um but it is better than it was when he was a kid but it is still kind of draining on him so eventually this gets to the point where Deku actually um, sees people running away from this, uh, from these very loud noises and he doesn't know what's up. So then he looks and he sees that there's a girl actually trapped and screaming. Then he notices that there's a giant robot about to crush her. So he actually runs towards, without thinking, runs towards the robot just how he does in canon and actually jumps using one for all and punching the robot just how he does in canon knocking him over so as this is done um he would still break his arm and this is where instead of uraraka actually saving him um this is where his sister would actually save him and or i guess she wouldn't be she wouldn't know so let's just say uraraka still saves him so yeah and then this is where his sister would come and, you know, basically uh, she'd be worried for him since he broke his arm and his legs. So she's basically, you know, uh, worried for him and saying, you know, Deku, are you are you OK? Like, you know, how bad is it or something to that effect? Right. She's kind of almost crying because her brother almost died. So as this is done, this is where. Uh, recovery girl would actually come and be like you know step aside and this is where she kisses him and you know his bones and other things are fixed because of it so yeah um, we would then after that kind of day or I guess week this is where 
uh, Sato and and Deku would actually get their letter from UA. They would open it up and they would talk about how Sato was one of the top um, one of the top kind of uh, people or students who participated, since she would be really easy. She would take out a lot of robots because of her teleportation combined with the explosions, and Deku would be in the top as well because of how he's able to how he's able to save uh, Uraraka as well as take out some robots from before so yeah um this is where I'm going to end it and in the next video we'll go over um basically the uh test and things like that and tell me who do you want uh to be out of class 1a since I'm going to put both Deku and his sister in class 1a so yeah with that being said this is going to be the end of the video, so yeah.